New UK Driving Theory Test Practice Test Number 1. What's badly affected if the tires are underinflated? A. Braking B. Changing gear C. Indicating D. Parking Correct answer A. Braking Explanation Your tires are your only contact with the road. To prevent problems with braking and steering, keep your tires free from defects. They must have sufficient tread depth and be correctly inflated. Correct tire pressures help reduce the risk of skidding and provide a safer and more comfortable drive or ride. Why have red routes been introduced in major cities? A. To allow lorries to load more freely. B. To help the traffic flow. C. To provide better parking. D. To raise the speed limits. Correct answer, B. To help the traffic flow. Explanation, inconsiderate parking can obstruct the flow of traffic and so make traffic congestion worse. Red routes are designed to prevent this by enforcing strict parking restrictions. Driving slowly in traffic increases fuel consumption and causes a buildup of exhaust fumes. What does this sign mean? A. A route for cyclists only. B. A route for pedestrians and cyclists. C. A route for pedestrians only. D. No route for pedestrians and cyclists. Correct answer. B. A route for pedestrians and cyclists. Explanation. This sign shows a shared route for pedestrians and cyclists. When it ends, the cyclists will be rejoining the main road. You're coming up to a roundabout. A cyclist is signaling to turn right. What should you do? A. Give a warning with your horn. B. Give a cyclist plenty of room. C. Overtake on the right. D. Signal the cyclist to move across. Correct answer. B. Give the cyclist plenty of room. Explanation. If you're following a cyclist who's signaling to turn right at a roundabout, leave plenty of room. Give them space and time to get into the correct lane. What do these motorway signs show? A. They warn of a police control ahead. B. Their countdown markers to a bridge. C. Their countdown markers to the next exit. D. Their distance markers to the next telephone. Correct answer. C. Their countdown markers to the next exit. Explanation. The exit from a motorway is indicated by countdown markers. These are positioned 90 meters, 100 yards apart, the first being 270 meters, 300 yards from the start of the slip road. Move into the left-hand lane well before you reach the start of the slip road. There are no speed limit signs on the road. How is a 30 miles per hour limit indicated? A. By double or single yellow lines. B. By hazard warning lines. C. By pedestrian islands. D. By street lighting. Correct answer. D. By street lighting. Explanation. There's a 30 miles per hour speed limit where there are street lights and less signs show another limit. When mustn't you stop on a clear way? A. At any time. B. During daylight hours. C. In the rush hour. D. When it's busy. Correct answer. A. At any time. Explanation. Clear ways are in place so that traffic can flow without the obstruction of parked vehicles. Just one parked vehicle can cause an obstruction for all other traffic. You mustn't stop where a clear way is in force, not even to pick up or set down passengers. On which occasion may you enter a box junction? A. When signaled by another road user. B. When there are fewer than two vehicles ahead. C. When traffic signs direct you. D. When your exit road is clear. Correct answer. D. When your exit road is clear. Explanation. Yellow box junctions are marked on the road to prevent the road becoming blocked. Don't enter the box unless your exit road is clear. You may wait in the box if you want to turn right and your exit road is clear but oncoming traffic or other vehicles waiting to turn right are preventing you from making the turn. What does this sign mean? A. 20 cars only parking zone. B. Maximum speed limit with traffic calming. 
C. Minimum speed limit with traffic calming. D. Only 20 cars are allowed at any one time. Correct answer. B. Maximum speed limit with traffic calming. Explanation. If you're in a place where there are likely to be pedestrians, for example, outside a school, near a park, in a residential area or in a shopping area, you should be cautious and keep your speed down. Many local authorities have taken steps to slow traffic down by creating traffic calming measures such as speed humps. They're there for a reason. Slow down. What are triangular signs for? A. To give directions. B. To give information. C. To give orders. D. To give warning. Correct answer. D. To give warnings. Explanation. This type of sign warns you of hazards ahead. Make sure you look at each sign that you pass on the road, so that you don't miss any vital instructions or information. At this junction, there's a stop sign on a solid white line on the road surface. Why is there a stop sign here? A. It's a busy junction. B. Speed on the major road is de-restricted. C. There are hazard warning lines in the center of the road. D. Visibility along the major road is restricted. Correct answer. D. Visibility along the major road is restricted. Explanation. If your view at a road junction is restricted, you must stop. There may also be a stop sign. Don't emerge until you're sure no traffic is approaching. If you don't know, don't go. How will a police officer in a patrol vehicle normally get you to stop? A. Flash the headlights, indicate left and point to the left. B. Pull alongside you, use the siren and wave you to stop. C. Use the siren, overtake, cut in front and stop. D. Wait until you stop then approach you. Correct answer. A. Flash the headlights, indicate left and point to the left. Explanation. You must obey signals given by the police. If a police officer in a patrol vehicle wants you to pull over, they'll indicate this without causing danger to you or other traffic. What does this motorway sign mean? A. Change to the lane on your left. B. Change to the opposite carriageway. C. Leave the motorway at the next exit. D. Pull up on the hard shoulder. Correct answer. A. Change to the lane on your left. Explanation. On the motorway, signs sometimes show temporary warnings due to traffic or weather conditions. They may be used to indicate lane closures, temporary speed limits, weather warnings. What does this sign mean? A. End of bus lane. B. End of motorway. C. No motor vehicles. D. No through road. Correct answer. B. End of motorway. Explanation. When you leave the motorway, make sure that you check your speedometer. You may be going faster than you realize. Slow down and look for speed limit signs. What do traffic calming measures do? A. Make overtaking easier. B. Make parking easier. C. Slow traffic down. D. Stop road rage. Correct answer. C. Slow traffic down. Explanation. Traffic calming measures make the roads safer for vulnerable road users, such as cyclists, pedestrians and children. These can be designed as chicanes, road humps or other obstacles that encourage drivers and riders to slow down. Why must these road markings be kept clear? A. To allow a clear view of the crossing area. B. To allow school children to be dropped off. C. To allow school children to be picked up. D. To allow teachers to park. Correct answer. A. To allow a clear view of the crossing area. Explanation. The markings are there to show that the area must be kept clear. This is to allow an unrestricted view for approaching drivers and riders, children wanting to cross the road. You're signaling to turn right in busy traffic. How would you confirm your intention safely? A. Flash your headlights. B. Give an arm signal. C. Position over the center line. D. Sound the horn. Correct answer. B. Give an arm signal. Explanation.
In some situations, you may feel your indicators can't be seen by other road users. If you think you need to make your intention more obvious, give the arm signal shown in the highway code. When approaching a right-hand bend, you should keep well to the left. Why is this? A. To be positioned safely if you skid. B. To improve your view of the road. C. To let faster traffic from behind overtake. D. To overcome the effect of the road slope. Correct answer. B. To improve your view of the road. Explanation. Doing this will give you an earlier view around the bend and enable you to see any hazards sooner. It also reduces the risk of collision with an oncoming vehicle that may have drifted over the center line while taking the bend. You're approaching an unmarked crossroads. How should you deal with this type of junction? A. Accelerate and keep to the middle. B. Accelerate and look to the left. C. Slow down and keep to the right. D. Slow down and look both ways. Correct answer. D. Slow down and look both ways. Explanation. Be cautious, especially when your view is restricted by hedges, bushes, walls, large vehicles, etc. In the summer months, these junctions can become more difficult to deal with because growing foliage may further obscure your view. What should the driver of the red car, arrowed, do? A. Quickly drive behind the pedestrian in the road. B. Tell the pedestrian in the road she shouldn't have crossed. C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. D. Wave towards the pedestrians who are waiting to cross. Correct answer. C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. Explanation. Some people might take a long time to cross the road. They may be older or have a disability. Be patient and don't hurry them by showing your impatience. If pedestrians are standing at the side of the road, don't signal or wave them to cross. Other road users might not have seen your signal and this could lead the pedestrians into a hazardous situation. You're parked on the road at night. Where must you use parking lights? A. Where the speed limit exceeds 30 miles per hour. B. Where there are continuous white lines in the middle of the road. C. Where you're facing oncoming traffic. D. Where you're near a bus stop. Correct answer. A. Where the speed limit exceeds 30 miles per hour. Explanation. When parking at night, park in the direction of the traffic. This will enable other road users to see the reflectors on the rear of your vehicle. Use your parking lights if the speed limit is over 30 miles per hour. At a puffin crossing, which color follows the green signal? A. Flashing amber. B. Flashing green. C. Steady amber. D. Steady red. Correct answer. C. Steady amber. Explanation. Puffin crossings have infrared sensors that detect when pedestrians are crossing and hold the red traffic signal until the crossing is clear. The use of a sensor means there's no flashing amber phase as there is with a pelican crossing. Why replace names painted on the road surface? A. To enable you to change lanes early. B. To prevent you changing lanes. C. To restrict the flow of traffic. D. To warn you of oncoming traffic. Correct answer. A. To enable you to change lanes early. Explanation. The names of towns and cities may be painted on the road at busy junctions and complex road systems. Their purpose is to let you move into the correct lane in good time, allowing traffic to flow more freely. You're traveling in the left-hand lane of a three-lane motorway. How should you react to traffic joining from a slip road? A. To maintain a steady speed. B. Move to another lane. C. The race the other vehicles. D. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Correct answer. B. Move to another lane. Explanation. Plan well ahead when approaching a slip road. If you see traffic joining the motorway, move to another lane if it's safe to do so. This can help the flow of traffic joining the motorway, especially at peak times. What does this sign mean? A. Two-way traffic crosses a one-way road. 
B. Two-way traffic crosses a two-way road. C. Two-way traffic over a bridge. D. Two-way traffic straight ahead. Correct answer. A. Two-way traffic crosses a one-way road. Explanation. Be prepared for traffic approaching from junctions on either side of you. Try to avoid unnecessary changing of lanes just before the junction. It can be helpful to plan your route before starting a journey. Why should you also plan an alternative route? A. You may find you have to pay a congestion charge. B. You may get held up by a tractor. C. Your maps may have different scales. D. Your original route may be blocked. Correct answer. D. Your original route may be blocked. Explanation. It can be frustrating and worrying to find your planned route is blocked by roadworks or diversions. If you've planned an alternative, you'll feel less stressed and more able to concentrate fully on your driving or riding. If your original route is mostly on motorways, it's a good idea to plan an alternative using non-motorway roads. Always carry a map with you just in case you need to refer to it. The road is wet. Why might a motorcyclist steer round rain covers on a bend? A. To avoid puncturing the tires on the edge of the drain covers. B. To avoid splashing pedestrians on the pavement. C. To help judge the bend using the drain covers as marker points. D. To prevent the motorcycle sliding on the metal drain covers. Correct answer. D. To prevent the motorcycle sliding on the metal drain covers. Explanation. Other drivers or riders may have to change course due to the size or characteristics of their vehicle. Understanding this will help you to anticipate their actions. Motorcyclists and cyclists will be checking the road ahead for uneven or slippery surfaces, especially in wet weather. They may need to move across their lane to avoid surface hazards such as potholes and drain covers. What's the national speed limit on a single carriageway road for cars and motorcycles? A. 30 miles per hour. B. 50 miles per hour. C. 60 miles per hour. D. 70 miles per hour. Correct answer. C. 60 miles per hour. Explanation. Exceeding the speed limit is dangerous and can result in you receiving penalty points on your license. It isn't worth it. You should know the speed limit for the road that you're on by observing the road signs. Different speed limits apply if you're towing a trailer. Who's legally responsible for ensuring that a vehicle registration certificate, V5C, is updated? A. The licensing authority. B. The registered vehicle keeper. C. The vehicle manufacturer. D. Your insurance company. Correct answer, B. The registered vehicle keeper. Explanation, it's your legal responsibility to keep the details on your vehicle registration certificate, V5C, up to date. You should tell the licensing authority about any changes. These include your name, address or vehicle details. If you don't do this, you may have problems when you try to sell your vehicle. You're approaching this roundabout and see the cyclist signal right. Why is the cyclist keeping to the left? A. It's a quicker route for the cyclist. B. The cyclist is going to turn left instead. C. The cyclist is slower and more vulnerable. D. The cyclist thinks the highway code doesn't apply to bicycles. Correct answer. C. The cyclist is slower and more vulnerable. Explanation. Cycling in today's heavy traffic can be hazardous. Some cyclists may not feel happy about crossing the path of traffic to take up a position in an outside lane. Be aware of this and understand that. Although they're in the left-hand lane, the cyclist might be turning right. What should you do when approaching this crossing? A. Continue unless the pedestrians step out. B. Prepare to slow down and stop. C. Speed up and pass by quickly. D. Stop and wave the pedestrians across. Correct answer. B. Prepare to slow down and stop. Explanation. Be courteous and prepare to stop. 
Don't wave people across because this could be dangerous if another vehicle is approaching the crossing. You're on a three-lane motorway. A red cross is showing above the hard shoulder and mandatory speed limits above all other lanes. What does this mean? A. The hard shoulder can be used as a normal running lane. B. The hard shoulder can be used as a rest area if you feel tired. C. The hard shoulder has a speed limit of 50 miles per hour. D. The hard shoulder is for emergency or breakdown use only. Correct answer. D. The hard shoulder is for emergency or breakdown use only. Explanation. A red cross above the hard shoulder shows that it's closed as a running lane and should only be used for emergencies or breakdowns. On a smart motorway, the hard shoulder may be used as a running lane at busy times. This will be shown by a mandatory speed limit on the gantry above the hard shoulder. A person has been injured. They may be suffering from shock. What are the warning signs to look for? A. Flushed complexion. B. Pale grey skin. C. Slow pulse. D. Warm dry skin. Correct answer. B. Pale grey skin. Explanation. The effects of shock may not be immediately obvious. Warning signs are rapid pulse, sweating, pale grey skin and rapid shallow breathing. Overall, stopping distance is made up of thinking distance and braking distance. You're on a good dry road surface with good brakes and tires. What's the typical braking distance from 50 miles per hour? A. 14 meters, 46 feet. B. 24 meters, 80 feet. C. 38 meters, 125 feet. D. 55 meters, 180 feet. Correct answer. C. 38 meters, 125 feet. Explanation. Be aware that this is just the braking distance. You need to add the thinking distance to this to give the overall stopping distance. At 50 miles per hour, the typical thinking distance will be 15 meters 50 feet. Plus a braking distance of 38 meters 125 feet, giving an overall stopping distance of 53 meters 175 feet. The stopping distance could be greater than this, depending on your attention and response to any hazards. These figures are a general guide. What should you do when passing sheep on a road? A. Briefly sound your horn. B. Go very slowly. C. Herd them to the side of the road. D. Pass quickly but quietly. Correct answer. B. Go very slowly. Explanation. Slow down and be ready to stop if you see animals in the road ahead. Animals are easily frightened by noise and vehicles passing too close to them. Stop if signal to do so by the person in charge. You're following other vehicles in fog. You have your lights on. What else can you do to reduce the chances of being in a collision? A. Keep close to the vehicle in front. B. Keep up with the faster vehicles. C. Reduce your speed and increase the gap in front. D. Use your main beam instead of dipped headlights. Correct answer. C. Reduce your speed and increase the gap in front. Explanation. When it's foggy, use dipped headlights. This will help you see and be seen by other road users. If visibility is seriously reduced, consider using front and rear fog lights if you have them. Keep to a sensible speed and don't follow the vehicle in front too closely. If the road is wet and slippery, you'll need to allow twice the normal stopping distance. What should you do when a person herding sheep asks you to stop? A. Continue on but drive slowly. B. Ignore them as they have no authority. C. Stop and switch off your engine. D. Try to get past quickly. Correct answer. C. Stop and switch off your engine. Explanation. If someone in charge of animals asks you to stop, you should do so and switch off your engine. Animals are unpredictable and startle easily. They could turn and run into your path or into the path of another moving vehicle. You want to reverse into a side road but you aren't sure that the area behind your car is clear. 
What should you do? A. Carry on, assuming it's clear. B. Check the mirrors only. C. Get out and check. D. Look through the rear window only. Correct answer. C. Get out and check. Explanation. If you can't tell whether there's anything behind you, it's always safest to check before reversing. There may be a small child or a low obstruction close behind your car. You intend to turn left from a main road into a minor road. What should you do as you approach it? A. Keep in the middle of the road. B. Keep just left of the middle of the road. C. Keep well to the left of the road. D. Swing out to the right just before turning. Correct answer. C. Keep well to the left of the road. Explanation. Your road position can help other road users to anticipate your actions. Keep to the left as you approach a left turn and don't swing out into the center of the road in order to make the turn easier. This could endanger oncoming traffic and may cause other road users to misunderstand your intentions. What should you do when you're unsure whether it's safe to reverse your vehicle? A. Get out and check. B. Rev your engine. C. Reverse slowly. D. Sound your horn. Correct answer, a get out and check. Explanation, a small child could be hidden directly behind you, so. If you can't see all around your vehicle, get out and have a look. You could also ask someone reliable outside the vehicle to guide you. When may you reverse from a side road into a main road? A. At any time. B. Not at any time. C. Only if both roads are clear of traffic. D. Only if the main road is clear of traffic. Correct answer. B. Not at any time. Explanation. Don't reverse into a main road from a side road. The main road is likely to be busy and the traffic on it moving quickly. Where's the safest place to park your vehicle at night? A. In a garage. B. In a quiet car park. C. Near a red route. D. On a busy road. Correct answer. A. In a garage. Explanation. If you have a garage, use it. Your vehicle is less likely to be a victim of car crime if it's in a garage. Also, in winter, the windows will be kept free from ice and snow. Wider MOT tests include a strict exhaust emission test. A. To discover which fuel supplier is used the most. B. To help protect the environment against pollution. C. To make sure diesel and petrol engines emit the same fumes. D. To recover the cost of expensive garage equipment. Correct answer, B. To help protect the environment against pollution. Explanation. Emission tests are carried out to make sure your vehicle's engine is operating efficiently. This ensures the pollution produced by the engine is kept to a minimum. If your vehicle isn't serviced regularly, it may fail the annual MOT test. When are anti-lock brakes abs most effective? A. When you apply the handbrake to reduce the stopping distance. B. When you brake normally but grip the steering wheel tightly. C. When you brake promptly and firmly until you've stopped. D. When you keep pumping the foot brake to prevent skidding. Correct answer. C. When you brake promptly and firmly until you've stopped. Explanation. If you have abs and need to stop in an emergency, keep your foot firmly on the brake pedal until the vehicle has stopped. When the abs operates, you may hear a grating sound and feel vibration through the brake pedal. This is normal and you should maintain pressure on the brake pedal until the vehicle stops. You're driving along this motorway. It's raining. What should you do when following this lorry? A. Allow at least a two-second gap. B. Be aware of spray reducing your vision. C. Move left and drive on the hard shoulder. D. Move right and stay in the right-hand lane. Correct answer. B. Be aware of spray reducing your vision. Explanation. The usual two-second time gap increases to four seconds when the roads are wet. If you stay well back, you'll be able to see past the vehicle. Be out of the spray thrown up by the lorry's tires.
Give yourself more time to stop if the need arises. Increase your chances of being seen by the lorry driver. Why is it a bad technique to coast when driving downhill? A. The engine will overheat. B. The fuel consumption will increase. C. The tires will wear more quickly. D. The vehicle will gain speed. Correct answer. D. The vehicle will gain speed. Explanation. Coasting is when you allow the vehicle to freewheel in neutral or with the clutch pedal depressed. Speed will increase as you lose the benefits of engine braking and have less control. You shouldn't coast, especially when approaching hazards such as junctions or bends and when traveling downhill. Your vehicle catches fire while driving through a tunnel. It's still drivable. What should you do? A. Drive it out of the tunnel if you can do so. B. Leave it where it is with the engine running. C. Park it away from the carriageway. D. Pull up, then walk to an emergency telephone. Correct answer. A. Drive it out of the tunnel if you can do so. Explanation. If it's possible, and you can do so without causing further danger. It may be safer to drive a vehicle that's on fire out of a tunnel. The greatest danger in a tunnel fire is smoke and suffocation. After passing your driving test, you suffer from ill health. This affects your driving. What must you do? A. Always drive accompanied. B. Avoid using motorways. C. Inform the licensing authority. D. Inform your local police. Correct answer, C. Inform the licensing authority. Explanation, you must tell DVLA or DVA in Northern Ireland if your health is likely to affect your ability to drive. The licensing authority will investigate your situation and then make a decision on whether or not to take away your license. Your motorway journey is boring and you feel drowsy. What should you do? A. Open a window and stop as soon as it's safe and legal. B. Slow down and let other drivers overtake. C. Speed up to arrive at your destination sooner. D. Stop on the hard shoulder for a sleep. Correct answer. A. Open a window and stop as soon as it's safe and legal. Explanation. Never stop on the hard shoulder to rest. If there's no service area for several miles, Leave the motorway at the next exit and find somewhere safe and legal to pull over. When may you stop on the hard shoulder of a motorway? A. If you feel tired and need to rest. B. If you miss the exit that you wanted. C. In an emergency. D. To pick up a hitchhiker. Correct answer. C. In an emergency. Explanation. You should only stop on the hard shoulder in a genuine emergency. Don't stop there to have a rest or picnic, pick up hitchhikers, answer a mobile phone or check a map. If you miss your intended exit, carry on to the next. Never reverse along the hard shoulder.